I will begin with dimensions, as one should. I had a mathematician friend tell me once, perhaps twice, the dimension is concerned with the constituent structure of all space and its relation to time. I did not understand this statement, and still I do not, in spite of its undeniable, obvious poetic charm. He also tried to tell me that the dimensions of an object are independent of the space in which that object is embedded. It's not clear to me that even he understood what he was saying, though he seemed quite taken with the idea. What I do understand is that my canvas is 12 feet high and 21 feet and 3 inches across. I cannot explain the 3 inches, but can say that they are crucial to the work. It is nailed to a wall that is 20 feet tall and 35 feet across. The opposite wall is the same and the adjacent walls are but 15 feet wide. And so the square footage of the space is 525. The volume of the building space is 10,500 cubic feet. I am six feet tall and weigh 192 pounds. I cannot explain the two pounds. I prefer that numbers be written out as words. Hey guys, I'm back again and I'm here to do a review of So Much Blue by Percival Everett. So Percival Everett is a writer I've been wanting to get to for a very long time. I'm so happy that I got a chance to read this one with my favorite buddy reader, and that is Patrice Jones. You know it. So we got together and read this book fairly quickly, actually, in about four to five days. It's not a very long book. It's only uh, maybe about 240 pages, something like that. So it's something that you can read fairly quickly. Now, Percival Everett is known to be a satirical writer. I don't always get the satire sometimes. I just laugh out loud when I think something is funny. Okay, so this book is about a black man whose name is Kevin Pace, and he is a painter. The book is told from his point of view, and they alternate sections between three different periods in his life. The first one is 1979, which is a period when he uh, takes a trip to El Salvador with his best friend and looking for his best friend's brother who's gone missing for quite some time. So they go down there together and they have an adventure. The second part of the book is Paris and that's when Kevin meets a young woman whose name is Victoire and he has an affair with her. She's a woman that he meets and she's a watercolorist in Paris. They meet and they, they have a like a flame. And the third part is a section which is called Home, which discusses Kevin's life as it is currently. Now, this is where the book kind of is interesting, the way he decides to tell the stories, alternating these sections. That part I thought was great. Now, this is where things kind of got off a little bit for me. The sections about Paris were cliched. I mean, cliched beyond belief. To the point where I thought, I thought to myself, this is cliched probably because he really wants it to be cliched. Is that what it is? And that's why I'm not getting it. But it's just the whole idea of him having this affair. He basically meets this woman and has, he like barely even lays eyes on her and he's already, you know, falling in love with her and having sex with her. It, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit. Then the other section, which is called 1979, where they go back to, to El Salvador. This section, it reads like a Tarantino film looks. Uh, it's got all kinds of, you know, strange phrasings. It's very macho man, kind of creepy, annoying, and yeah. So there's that section. And then there's the home section, which is very interesting. But the character does some things that are just inconceivable. Like it just doesn't fit for reality. Now this is where I'm trying to think 
Is it me? Am I tripping that I don't like this book? I just feel like it, it felt very gimmicky and everything was kind of like pushed together. That doesn't really make sense. Although there were parts that really made both of us laugh out loud. So he scores points for that. The writing, there's something wrong with the writing. It's fine. There is one thing that's really interesting is the way he puts together dialogues. They really do feel like the way people would speak in real life. And I think that is pretty interesting. But sometimes some of the phrases like there's this one part in the book where they're in um, El Salvador and they're talking to this really rough mercenary, redneck, uh, you know, overweight kind of bum kind of guy. And at one point they stop and they're going to stay in this hotel or something. And he says, the guy says, I'm going to go get my knob polished. And you're just like, you're going to get your knob polished. Like, <laughs> I was just like, what is this phrasing? That's when you see that it's really, it's really very uh, Tarantino-ish. And I guess that's the part that's supposed to be very satirical. But here again, things do not fit together properly. They fit together almost like a gimmick. And this title of So Much Blue is just, this is, it's nothing. Uh, you know, there's references to the color blue all through the book, but does that merit the book being called So Much Blue? In my opinion, it does not. So that's what I have to say about this book. I didn't particularly care for it. I gave this a two star over on Goodreads. I didn't even bother to write a review because I just like couldn't formulate anything. But this is, this ain't it for the Percival Everett. But I will be continuing on the Percival Everett train because I'm determined. I feel like this isn't his best. This is his latest and this was published I think in 2018. But I will be continuing and buddy reading another Percival Everett with Patrice and it's going to be this one right here which is Erasure. So yeah I hear this one is a much better book. So wish me luck. I'll keep you posted. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.